Hello and welcome to Matt's ICT Lab. Now today, due to popular demand, I'll be working through a past paper, in this case the May-June 2009 Practical Paper 2 IGCSE ICT paper. So, I'll be doing the Word, uh, the Document Production section only, so that's question 5 through to question 37. Okay, now I'll be going quite fast, it's half six and I haven't had dinner yet. Good thing about YouTube though is you can watch this video as many times as you like but you can only like it once. So, using a suitable software package, load the file j9sales.rtf. So, j9sales, I've called it j9sales2 because I was having problems opening the file. It doesn't matter, this is the file that we need. So, we opened it there, set the page size to A4, set the page orientation to landscape. Page size to A4 in the page layout section. Page size to A4, orientation to landscape. Good. Set all of the margins to two centimeters. Okay. So margins now, we can see that the is set up, the measurements are set up in centimeters. Uh, but you can see if they were set up in inches, you can see that in my other video, changing, I've not made it yet, changing the size measurements in word from inches to centimeters. Coming soon. So two centimeters each. Okay, we don't need to put in the measurements because that's what was set up in centimeters already. And there we go, our margins change. Now, format the entire document into two columns of equal width with a two centimeter gap between the columns. Okay, so again, we're dealing with laying out our page and we're highlighting the whole document. I'm just going to control A to highlight the whole document. Columns, more columns, and two columns with a two centimeter gap between them. Okay, if we need a line, we can check this box here and we could set the width of our columns uh, specifically, but we want equal column widths. Okay, okay that. Just zoom out a wee bit so we can have a look to see that our document has turned out okay. Good, and that's exactly what we wanted. Now, set all the text to a serif font. All the text to a serif font. So, we should know from the styles video that serif is text, is text width little strokes and in our case I like to use Times New Roman. Keep it simple, don't don't overcomplicate things if you're sitting in an exam. Set all the text to 1.55 line spacing. Now this is something that some of my students do struggle with. Set all the text to 1.5 line spacing is not difficult. Home Paragraph section, there's the line space and options, 1.5, done. Okay, home, paragraph section, line space and options, 1.5. You can go into your line space and options or open up your paragraph box as well if you want, but we don't need to, we just need to select this box. Okay, please, practice it if you need to. Make all the text left aligned. Okay, got it all selected. Left aligned. Easy so far. Make the font size for all the text to 11 point. There we go. Insert a page break before the first paragraph. Okay, this is a unorthodox page layout. Breaks, page break. Now what it's done is, it's broken everything from don't need that. Broken everything from the first page onto the second page and it's, it's spilling over onto the third page there. So we've got a blank page here uh, as page one. I'll just zoom in here. Right, now what do we have to do next? Format only the first page of the document into a single column. So you may remember that we changed everything into two columns. 
they want the first page though as one column. So I'm just going to highlight the first page just by dragging the mouse across it, changing it to one column. Okay. Let's scroll down a bit. Make this first page a title page by adding the heading Very Special Holidays 2009 in a sans serif font. So sans serif font without strokes. Very Special Holidays 2009 is our title or heading. Very Special Holidays without a P 2009. That was a while ago. Okay. Before we move on, just going to highlight one thing here. Make the first page a title page by adding the heading. Okay? Heading, not header. Got a question about headers down here, which is different from heading. So you're not putting this uh, title or this, this heading in the header. Please learn the difference between heading and header. Okay, in this case, this is our heading, Fair Special Holidays in a sans serif font, which is not yet. Sans serif without strokes is Arial. There we go. Center line the heading. Done. Set the font size of the heading to 36 point. Okay. There you go. If you had put it in the header, you would be asking yourself, why have I such a large header at this stage? Okay, but it's not a header. It's a heading. Make only the words very special, italic and underlined. So very special, italic, underlined. Okay. Below the heading, add the subheading, sales report by and add your name. Okay, so sales report by and my name. There we go. Set the text used for the subheading to the same sans serif font as the heading, which it is. Set the font size of the subheading to 18 points. 18 points, I'll just type that in there. There we go. Right aligned the subheading. Right aligned. Okay. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. Place your name left aligned, your center number center aligned, and your candidate number right aligned in the header. Place an automated page number left aligned in the footer. Make sure that the headers and footers do not appear on page 1, but are displayed on all other pages. Make sure that all the alignments match the margin settings. Now it is worth noting that when you have a large question like this, like question 24 with a lot of different, uh, different parts to it, read through the question and decide what order you're going to do it in, and it will it'll help you to plan ahead if you have to do it in a certain order. So place your name left aligned, center number center aligned, candidate number right aligned in the header. And we do not want these on page one, but we want them on all other pages. So we'll select page two, insert our header. Now we're going to put in one part in each. So name here. Uh, what was it in the middle? Center number, center line, candidate number, right line. Okay, well, we don't have these, so we'll just make them up. A, B, one, two, three. Center number, candidate number, nine, 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 nine. Okay. Now, we can see that it is coming in the first page. Okay, so if we close that, that is going to be permanent. So we don't want that. So we'll just open the headers up and do different from first page. Different first page, check this box here. You can see the headers disappeared from the first page, but it is still on the other pages. So I'm going to close this and make sure that that's appeared on page two and page three. Good. Now, 
footers we're placing a, an automated page number left aligned in the footer okay now there's a few ways you can do this a I prefer to do it by inserting footer, which is a blank footer. Uh, sorry, just make sure I've selected the correct page here. Insert footer. Okay, and rather than type in text in there, we'll insert a page number at current position. Now, in my upcoming video, headers and footers, which deals with headers and footers, we'll learn why that's significant to insert it at current position. Okay, but I'll just pop that in there just now and just double click here to close my headers and footers. Now we can see there's no headers and footers on the first page, which is exactly what we want, but we have our headers and footers on page two and page three. Excellent. Move the third paragraph that starts our new offering is at the Paradise Retreat so that it becomes the second paragraph. Third paragraph becomes second paragraph. One, two, three. There's the third paragraph. There are new offerings at the Paradise Retreat. I'll just zoom in that wee bit so we can see this. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to cut it. Oh, I've missed out a full stop. Control Z to undo that. I'll just try and highlight that again. That should be the easy part. Cut it. And make it the second paragraph. Control V to paste it there. And we don't need huge gaps between the paragraphs, so we'll just tidy it up. Okay, our new offering is at the Paradise Retreat, is now paragraph 2. Uh, and we've basically switched paragraph 2 and paragraph 3. Change the numbered list, Strand, Oxford Street, Regent Street, to a bulleted list. It's not specified what bullets, uh, but, um, so we just choose any bullets. Let's choose sensible bullets, shall we? Highlight the list, home, bullets. There we go, it's quite an easy paper. Okay, find the table which has the word code in the top left cell. Complete the table by adding the hotel and location details as shown below. Make sure that the font matches the font specified for the body text of the document and that all of the table is visible with no text strapping. The table must fit within the column and must not change its position in the document. Okay, it's quite a lot there. To find a table that has the word code, let's start first of all. There we go, that's the one. And we're filling in the location. Uh, we're adding the hotel and location details. Okay, I wonder if I can... Right, I'm going to do the first one. I'm going to pause it and fill in the others. So location, Jersey. Okay, that's our details filled into the table there. So let's just make sure that we've finished the rest of this question. Uh, complete the table by adding hotel and location details as shown. Done. Make sure that the font matches the font specified for the body text of the document and that all of the table is visible with no text wrapping, which it is. Okay, we just need to change the font. So the font of the document is Times New Roman size 11. Times New Roman size 11. Font specified for the body text. Good, and that's us. So that's that table question finished. Excellent. Find the table which has the word staff in the top left cell. Okay, here we go. There's the table with the word staff in the top left cell. So we're dealing with this table now. Okay. Copy the staff details, first name, family name, office and start date 
from the file j9staff.csv and paste them into the table to the right of the staff codes. Okay, so we need to open the CSV file in a, in a, Word, in a Word document and copy the first name, family name, office and start date and paste them into this, this document, this table here. Okay, well, as well getting started. J9 staff, this is the table we want to open, so we'll open a new Word document. We'll open J9 staff, so school, 2009 paper, J9 staff, again, called 2 because of the restrictions on this computer. This is the, the comma separated value file in Word, and I'm going to highlight it all, and I'm going to insert table and convert this text to a table. Okay, and you can see an example of this in a bit more detail in the video a uh, converting uh, opening CSV files in, in Word. Okay, let's just have a look. What is it we need to do? We need to get the first name, family name, office and start date and copy them. Okay, so first name Select all that, control C to copy, switch over to this one, control V to paste. Good. There we go. Now still looking a little bit kind of disheveled. We might have to deal with that in a bit. We'll leave this open just in case we need it. Paste in. Okay. Delete the first column from the table containing staff codes. Okay, so this is staff codes here. Right click, delete cells, delete entire column, staff codes are gone. Delete the row from the ta table containing Lucille Mather. Okay, so Lucille Mather, we'll just click anywhere in that row, right click, again delete cells, this time delete entire row. And Lucille Mather row is now gone as well. Ugh. Okay, let's try that again. Staff codes here. So we'll click anywhere in the column, right click, delete cells, delete entire column. Now that we're deleting it in the correct table, right click on Lucille Mather, delete cells, delete entire row. Lucille Mather, Lu Lucille Mather is gone. So I did a wee practice on this one, and it worked out fine on this one. Good, exactly as planned. Make sure that the text in the table is formatted to match the body text of the document. Okay, this table. All right, so it's clearly not because we've got different fonts there. Make sure that the text is okay. Times in Roman, size 11. Okay, so we just highlight everything in this table. Make it Times New Roman. Size 11. There we go. Format the column headings to be italic, underline, and centered. Okay, so the column headings are here. Italic, underline, center lined. Okay, again, quite an easy thing, but mistakes that people make is they know what they have to do. They know they're supposed to be uh, changing it to italic, underlined, and centered. But I don't know, maybe they lose concentration. So read the questions very carefully and make sure that you're not missing anything out or, or doing anything wrong. Format the background, for, uh, sorry, for, yeah, format the background of the top row to be a light grey shade. Okay, so we've got the top row highlighted. So we'll go into Table Properties, right click, Table Properties, Borders and Shading, because we're looking to shade. And Shading, Colour, Light Grey. 
Okay, so it should be something like that. Okay. Okay, and there we go. Now, did it ask us for a specific light grey? No, a light grey shade. So it's pretty light grey, if you ask me. Good. Uh, format all borders in the table to appear when printed. Okay, so again, into table properties, borders and shading. This time it's borders. We want all borders on. Okay. Okay, so all borders are now there and they will appear when printed. Okay. Make sure that all the contents of the table are visible with no text trap. The table must fit within the column and not change position in the document. Okay, so we can see that there is some text trap in the top row here. So the way we deal with that is we just go between the on the line there and just double click and it'll open up to the correct size. It does fit within the column width. We could see the column width starts there and ends there, so it's within the column width. Uh, fit within the column and not change. Okay, good. So that's that's the way we wanted the table to be. Oh, Oxford Street. That's text wrapped. So we'll just open that. Good, it still does fit within the column width and it meets all the criteria. That's a relief. Okay. Good, so now in newer versions of Word, when you move the table about, a blue line appears which shows you uh, where the, the column begins and the column ends so that you can navigate your table around there. Uh, with ease. Okay, question 35. Second last, third last question. Import a graphic image showing an island or a hotel from clipper, scanner, digital camera or elsewhere and place this immediately after the text. Our next mystery destination and our new brochure. Okay, now I have saved this image here of Beach Hotel, uh, and I just took that from the internet from from Google. So I'm going to be inserting that um, immediately after the text. Our next mystery destination in our new brochure. So back to our document. I think we can get rid of this table now. Our next mystery. There we go. Our next mystery destination in our new brochure. So I'm just going to create a space there. Now I've not tried this picture yet, so let's hope it works. Insert picture from file. We'll go to our school folder, to the name paper, Beach Hotel, don't be massive. Perfect. Okay. Resize the, <clears throat> change the image so that it is resized to fill the column width. Certainly does fill the column width there. Starts there, ends there. And again, with images as well, uh, when you resize it, you can resize it here. So if, for example, it was that size and it was too big, you would just resize it so it fitted the, the column width. Okay, and again, with the newer versions of Word, a blue line comes up to show you where the edge of the where the edge of the um, the column is there. Okay, well, that's a nice beach hotel. Its aspect ratio is maintained. Of course, aspect ratio is maintained. So uh, another way we could do this, we could, I suppose, if we want to be really specific, go into columns. We can find that the width of the column is 11.85 centimeters. We can right click and then we can make size and position. We can make the width 11.85 centimeters. Oh, check that again. 11.85. Okay, so size and position 11.84. We're very close. 
one milli one point of a millimeter up. Eleven point eight five. Okay. And there we go, we've resized it by to exactly the width of the column. Aspect ratio is maintained, of course, never grab an image by one of these handles, the top or bottom, and, and, and stretch it or squash it. Okay, if your image is stretched or squashed in any assignment, you've done something wrong. They'll never ask you to stretch or squash an image. So if it is, maybe review the question again. The text wraps above and below the image. It may look like this and you'll, you'll in most cases you get a little image, a little picture to show you what it should look like. Okay, so text wraps above and below the image. We'll just set our text wrapping on. Okay. Just leave it in line with text there. Right now. That's how it's asked us to leave it. Good. It may look like this, which it does. Save the document using a new file name. Okay, so this is our document completed. Just going to zoom out, have a little look. This is what your document should look like once it's finished and you should be able to print it off and use that for revision purposes. So I'm going to save it with a new file name. Save as. I'm saving it in Documents, school, 2009 paper, J9 sales, edit, and save. Whew, okay, that's the document production part of the uh, 2009 paper 2. Uh, what I'd recommend is work through it and then use this video. Uh, to check if your answers are, or if you've, what you've done is correct. Pro probably should have mentioned that at the start of the video though. Okay, hope you found this video useful. If you have anything else you'd like to see, please mention it in the comments section or speak to me in school. Uh, uh, thank you for listening.